Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kosciuszko Foundation's webinar. I got imprisoned for rock and roll. Andrzej Stasiuk and the literature of periphery with Dr. Krzysztof Gajewski. My name is Eva Zadvorna. I'm director of cultural affairs at the foundation, and I welcome all of you who joined us for today's webinar. This lecture is the second one in a series of lectures presented in collaboration with the Institute of Literary Research of the Polish Academy of Sciences. The goal of the series is to present the works by some of the most acclaimed Polish authors recognized in Europe, whose works are translated into English, yet who perhaps are a little less known in America. We thought that by borrowing knowledge of the Institute's literary experts, we will be able to present to our audience some of these most notable writers whose works are worth reading and knowing. With respect to viewers who are with, with more advanced knowledge about the Polish literature, we hope that the presented lecture will enrich your knowledge and will shine light on some new aspects of the body of work of the presented authors. And today on the agenda, there is a discussion about the strong prose, if I may say, by Andrzej Stasiuk, one of the most acclaimed Polish contemporary authors, recipient of the Nika Award, uh, which is the highest literary award in Poland. And the close analysis of Andrzej Stasiuk and his body of work will be given to you today by Dr. Krzysztof Gajewski, an author, lecturer, and researcher of the Polish literature. Dr. Gajewski has been with the Institute for nearly a decade. He is the author of three books and dozens of journal articles and book chapters. His current research interest includes critical analysis of discourse, media theory, people's history, cultural studies on communism, and post-colonial criticism. Dr. Gajewski, Krzysztof, welcome and thank you very much for agreeing to prepare and I give this talk to our audience. And now, without further ado, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, such a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Uh, I would like, first of all, to thank you, the foundation, Kosciuszko Foundation, and the people running it and the people behind it to, to, for inv inviting me for these lectures. I appreciate very much uh, this opportunity, this is for me the first time to hold such a great event as a, uh, as a, such a long, long distance lecture. I hope uh, I can uh, at least partly fulfill your expectations. Also, I am afraid there is one little misunderstanding because uh, Eva told me that it's a popular lecture. It should be for general public, like very uh, basic introduction to the Stasiuk uh, uh, works and uh, and um, and uh, books. Whereas I see among the audience maybe people that are better specialists on Stasiuk literature literature than myself. So I treat it as a as a very uh, very <clears throat> difficult exam. For me too. So let's uh, let's start the uh, the presentation because I pre prepared some presentation. Maybe I will start start to share my screen with you. I hope you can see the presentation now. We can see. All is good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, 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 I will uh, make it full screen. Okay, it should be full screen now. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm very happy that uh, I have uh, the whole uh, hour to talk. Uh, I also, uh, I very much, uh, very much uh, do hope for a discussion after after the the presentation after my my speech. Also, I'm uh, I'm very open for any questions during the speech, especially if there are some linguistic problems. Uh, language is not uh, not my, my my mother tongue. Also, maybe there are some connections problem. Please do not hesitate 
and uh, interrupt me i i will be i will uh, repeat or i will explain or i will try to answer any any question uh, relating the uh, the presentation so first of all i i i don't know what's your knowledge uh, as i said I, I i i guess some people know very very good the uh, the, the works of Stasiuk among uh, among you among uh, publicity among audience, but also maybe there there are some persons that um, just heard the name or maybe read some books or just or even don't know uh, doesn't know anything. So I will start from the scratch from the very begin beginning, especially that it is very interesting and very important beginning in the. Uh, as as for as 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 the um, person of Andrzej Stasiuk is concerned, because uh, he is one of these writers with uh, biography. Uh, it used to be few dozen years ago, few few maybe hundred years ago, this big wave or literary uh, literary avant garde, but now uh, at least in Polish literature in the literature of 80s, 90s, there were less and less these uh, formerly very abundant uh, creators, poets, writers that were that were living very interesting, so-called interesting life, traveling or uh, or having having uh, uh, exotic adventures or or, or doing uh, um, some some risky things in his in his or her lives, uh, so it is not common in this uh, Polish literature of the end of twentieth century. And Stasiuk is one of the ex ex exceptions. He's definitely one of these uh, one of these writers whose life, one of these creators, one of these artists whose lives whose whose life is not far from the creation. His life is. What one could say as much interesting as the narratives of his uh, fiction, fictional uh, works. So I will start with a uh, short introduction to the life and work of Stasiuk. So I will talk a bit about his life. Then I will um, I will devote some few words, some sentence, sentences to explain uh, how uh, how do I understand this notion of literature of periphery? Periphery. I coined this uh, phrase actually at hope just for this lecture, and I guess I, I was very lucky with this because I, I Google it uh, afterwards. I found it uh, in some uh, article, so it was already existing before my my uh, idea. So my idea was not uh, was not original. But I think it is very interesting, very useful uh, notion, and uh, I think it fits very well to 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 the to the work, to the creation, to the literary creations of Andrzej Stasiuk. To that extent that uh, I, I even remark, I can remark, I can indicate after reading uh, again his uh, his his very abundant, uh, very abundant ever. He's a very prolific writer, not very, but quite. So you can find different uh, different form, forms of the periphery. So as, as you see, I, 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 I'm enumerating here four of them. It's uh, definitely not the not the closed list, closed uh, enumeration, not, not the closed list, but, and of course, I'm just, I'm just, uh, just giving some basic basic sketches basic points of course there is uh, much much more to, to 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 find in his in his in his words i am just starting to to describe this this uh, this, uh, this 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 sphere just with few quotations as you will see but it's 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 already enough to talk i think it's not already enough to oh sorry it's not okay. So so far so good. So uh, Andrzej Stasiuk, just to fix uh, attention on this person. This is the not not the newest photo. This is the photo from the uh, from more or less the beginning of his uh, literary career. And uh, 
I don't know uh, why, but I uh, I thought when that that I when I'm talking to the audience from the other continent, I I would rather uh, locate my own continent. I know that uh, most of you know very well where is Poland, but still I cannot I cannot help and not to quote the quotation. You probably maybe you know at least Polish people uh, probably with Polish descent uh, origins should know. It's very popular. A quotation in Poland, la Pologne c'est à dire nulle part. In Poland, c'est nigdzie. Poland, this is to say nowhere. It's a quotation from uh, from pre Dadaist, uh, pre Dadaist avant-garde uh, drama of Alf Alfred Jarry, a French author. Uh, quotation from the times when really Poland didn't politically exist. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, I think this quotation is quite sensible in the context of our uh, our uh, reflections, our analysis uh, regarding uh, Stasiuk ever ever since. It shows that there is something uh, in 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 the general perception of Poland that it is somehow perceived as something that is far far from 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 where from the center we'll discuss later the notion of center or and the notion and the, the question of this is absolute or relative notion at the end so here we are in poland stasiuk was born in the 60s so he's rather let's say the, the middle middle generation writer nowadays he was born in warsaw so fairly in the center of this country. So for sure, as a author of periphery, he was supposed to move out of this center, what he of course did after, but uh, let's, okay, let's, um, uh, to introduce you to, you probably most of you didn't visit it, including me, didn't visit it Warsaw in the 60s. Maybe some of you didn't visit this war, didn't visit it, didn't, didn't visit Warsaw at all. So I, I'm gonna. Uh, I wanted to show you some pictures from the times, the Stasiu, from the childhood of Stasiu. Why I'm showing this picture? Because this picture shows the Warsaw that is very much present in Stasiu ever, and where when we read, we like Polish people, especially people from Warsaw, when we leave some Stasiu uh, works, Stasiu text, we can very precisely localize it on the map of Warsaw. He's very much Warsaw writer, even though he escaped from Warsaw. But this is how Warsaw looked like the, in the 60s. There, this is a photo from, from National Archive. Mm. This is the city, which is not the mainstream of Europe, not the center, but still uh, having very its very strong identity. And uh, also very interesting from the point of view of architecture. Architecture, which is very mu much mixed, like this photo is showing. This is this pre-war Warsaw, and this is this new communist post-war Warsaw. Here we are. This is one of the symbols of uh, Polish, uh, Polish People's Republic and the, the gizmo, if I can call it in this way, that is very much present on the pages uh, of uh, Stasiuk's uh, prose. Namely, this is distri distri distributor in Polish, so distributor in English probably. It served to distribute uh, cold drinks. There are juice. Inside there was a mechanism that served water with gas and people were just drinking with that glasses that were washed just here on place, just with no any washing dish here. Uh, here we are. This is the Warsaw. This is this uh, maybe a bit uh, uh, sentimental, but still a um, view of Warsaw. And th this, we can say, this is the places more or less Stasiuk childhood were, was going on. He attended uh, professional high school Liceum um, Zawodowe affiliated at, uh, at the uh, car factory in Warsaw, Fabryka Samochodów Osobowych, like personal car factory. It was, uh, but still, 
the crisis of the 80s. I know that uh, this is uh, not only, it, it passed not only in Poland, I think that this is one of the similarities, one of the co common things, uh, like global waves of crisis. Uh, in the United States, I guess it was also maybe not such harsh situation. In Poland, it was uh, really difficult. It, find, it, it finished in the fall of the whole system, creating a new system. And Stasiuk was part of the movement. He was um, he was taking part uh, probably actively, but not for a very much long time. I, I think only in the second part. Actually, in the second uh, in the in the eighties, uh, this is uh, his, uh, I think he started cooperation with Wolna Shipoku after leaving his. Uh, so, okay, so so it was for first first part of the eighties. But uh, and this is this is his uh, his um, his not very known actually it is uh, it is not often even uh, enumerated in these in the literary dictionaries. This is his one could say unofficial uh, debut uh, debut literary debut. This is just few pages uh, brochure, kind of sociological sketch regarding uh, prison. Uh, uh, subculture, because uh, as I will uh, as I will tell you uh, as I will tell you soon, of course not, not of course, but the next part of his life is short short uh, short uh, period in prison, and after leaving the prison, uh, he uh, he published this book. It was not not very not very uh, not very uh, big uh, book, just few pages, but. I think uh, you can already perceive there his quite, quite, um, even though he was quite young at that moment, it, it was published, uh, not, not very, oh, actually, not very, 29 years old, but already it was kind of st st stylized on, 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 uh, on, on Archipelag Guak Solzhenitsyn style, like this, the life of prison. And this title, title, actually, I'm starting from here also, like you to show one of these uh, cultural transfers between Anglo-Saxon American culture and Polish culture, because it's not translation, it's the original version of the book. The original version was in English, because as he uh, writes in the in the book, it is the, the, the one of most popular tattoos uh, in Polish prisons. Prison is hell. Um, then his uh, literary career started and flourished and mushroomed and he during the 90s he was very he, he published a lot in different uh, different periodicals uh, especially uh, especially mark uh, is uh, brulion deserves a special remark Brulion is a, a literary, uh, literary uh, periodical, which is not uh, not uh, not uh, not active anymore. But he played enormous, very very important, I would say, crucial role in the ev evolution of Polish literature of the end of nineteenth century. Uh, I, I'm not gonna to get deeper, but it will do uh, to say that from these the. Uh, the environment, the, the group of brilliant writers, uh, not only Stasiuk comes from, but also Olga Tokarczuk. They both, uh, they both literary beginnings are related very much with Brulion. Um, and this is, uh, this is um, his photo from his poetic debut from 1994. As we can read on this very short bio, uh, he doesn't have any special beliefs, smoke a lot. Like we, we see this literary creation, this pose, he's not covering anything. He's ostentatively showing his literary literary role, like kind of kind of kind of literary avant-garde uh, avant-garde person. But any anyway, uh, I, as as I said, he didn't participate in political life very actively because, on already in the middle of eighties, uh, he moved to the uh, to the mountains. He left Warsaw. 
He settled in Char at Charme. As you see these photos, you can probably understand him better. I understand him very well, and but still not decided to move there. So his work was uh, at the moment like a work of normal, of, of common people work uh, living there. First, he was taking taking care of this uh, Orthodox church. The church uh, was built, as you can see, 1783, and until 1993 was at Czarne because after that it was moved to Skansen with, I don't, uh, don't, don't know details, but Stasiuk was taking care of this, of this, uh, I, uh, of this, uh, this church. Uh, and then, uh, and then with help of Monika Schneiderman, he created and ran uh, until our days uh, one of the most uh, prestigious Polish uh, publishing house, namely Czarne, publishing house uh, Czarne. His wife, Monika Schneiderman, PhD in cultural anthropology, is the head of the of the of the of this house. And uh, this is, uh, I was, I, I cannot help again not to show you this photo, maybe not the most interesting, but anyway, for me, it's very, very uh, exciting and interesting to contrast the photo of this silver medal, married for culture with this first photo of Stasiuk uh, as a punk, uh, punk or as a, as a, as a literary, literary um, avant-gardist. And then he he's still very active, not only as a writer, but also as a cultural animator. He's director of Sigmund Haupt Festival. Three years ago, he started to run a musical rock group. Actually, he was a rock, rock uh, active rockman, I think, uh, from the for the, all of his life, or at least in, in his early career. Here we can see the album, music album, Mickiewicz, Stasiuk, Haidamaki. I think that it's, it's very impressive that Stasiuk is renovating Polish uh, romantic tradition, but uh, also I think it's very, the act of big courage to put his name just after Mickiewicz. And this is it, this is the, Sure, the list of more or less the, all of uh, all the uh, books of Stasiuk. Of course, I'm not counting short, short articles. Most of them probably are included into these books. Just to give you a short, uh, short uh, view on this long list, he started, as I told you, with this prison is hell, a small brochure, and then his real, his real official debut the walls of Hebron with biblical title. This is the, uh, the work uh, describing his life in, um, in prison, uh, telling his experience, uh, inspired and very, very much uh, close in the style and way of presentations to, to this Gulag literature. Uh, so Zanitsyn, uh, but also I think uh, other, other, other writers. Uh, his poetic debut, uh, Love, Poems, and No, and No, no if you, they're not easy to translate. Uh, his uh, fiction, his fictional uh, narrative works, Biały Kruk, but then after Biały Kruk, which was one of his, uh, one of the milestone in his career, it, it, this, this novel is uh, very much uh, um, make his career developing really fast. I remember by myself the dis disappointment of, uh, let's say a little disappointment of, of the readers when he started here with Opowieści Galicis, his essayist, essayist, uh, essayist uh, cre creation. Uh, essays, the uh, books, uh, very interesting also, but still uh, afterwards, uh, he's devoted very much to this essayist form. And unfortunately, I think because he's a very good storyteller, not there, are also, of course, he's still writing novels, but very much there is uh, a, a lot of 
non fiction non non uh, non fabular non fabular creation um, already in 1998 he writes he wrote his autobiography artistic autobiography so not even after 10 years after his de debut uh, and uh, Another milestone is in his career, Moja Europa, a short but important book written with Yuri Androkovich, uh, press, uh, very important, famous uh, Ukrainian writer. And from this point, this project of the Central Europe, this big project uh, that is, I think, that, that be became the main symbol, main, uh, main notion, main... Uh, main uh, main figure of of the of of uh, andrzej stasiuk uh, literary ever starts in in uh, moja europa stasiuk i will i will tell tell about this uh, this uh, stasiuk's europe at the end uh, of my lecture with more details but i'm just i wanted just to signalize the 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 question so moja europa and my europe on the road to badabak uh, this is more or less the, the the topic of Central Europe, and here with notes notes Chenelas Deutschland czekając na Turka, the 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 topic the German topic is started. German topic is also very important for 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 Stasiuk's prose and and Russian of course Scud East. And his, uh, to finish uh, with his latest novel, Przewóz, uh, not yet published, I think it will be published soon. Uh, it's, uh, it is, uh, I think, first time in the, in the Stasiuk, uh, I'm not sure, but probably first time it will be very, it will be kind of critical revision of Polish history, as far as I understood from, the, from this interview he gave to the press. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, from this uh, quite long list of works, only these, uh, as far as I know, these six, the, the most of them are the, 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 the oldest, are translated into English. However, Stasiuk is quite, uh, quite uh, willingly translated on other languages, especially for in German. He wrote several uh, theater pieces uh, for uh, as, as, uh, for order in order uh, of German a few German theaters. French, Czech, as you can see, uh, there is quite a lot of these translations. Of course, oh, oh, this is uh, the list. Uh, of course, not not full of his uh, prizes, awards. So he's fulfilled uh, author, as you can see. Okay, so. I think I, I will just few uh, say some words, say a few few words about this literature of periphery, which I which I propose as a as a key to key to interpret not only Stasiuk 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 ever, but uh, even though he's he's in in special in in a special in a special way, but also I think that this. Uh, periphery, uh, the, the perif perif uh, periphery, um, peripheral perspective, the point of view of periphery uh, is present uh, in uh, the works of some of the most below beloved, most important writers, such as in Polish language Bruno Schulz or Stanisław Vincenz or Marek Nowakowski, who is Bruno Schulz. Uh, writing from the point of view of Drohobych of Ukrainian Polish Ukrainian village, Vincent also um, also is is uh, is telling the story of of uh, of provincial life of Hutzul. Marek Nowakowski is a is a um, how to say poet of social uh, social periphery. He wrote. Uh, stories and novels about uh, poor people, criminals, about excluded people, Sokrat Janowicz, uh, the writers of uh, national, national uh, minority, Zygmunt Haupt, the literary master of, of, uh, of, of Stasio, also the, the, the person that moved from periphery to, to, uh, to, the, to the, you can say, to center. He, he immigrated to United States. 
uh, finally, and as far as I remember, and also in the in the American writer, some of most prominent of them, like John Steinbeck and William Faulkner, I think that to some extent also can be uh, can be described as as uh, writers of periphery. Okay. So I talk, uh, I uh, talked a bit uh, the periphery, um, uh, biographical periphery. Uh, we can encounter encounter not only in the Stasiu creation, literary creation, but also in his life, which is as I as I already uh, told you, very close uh, one to another. He's right. Sometimes it's difficult to say if it's fiction or 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 uh, truth but mostly Stasiuk um, um, one can say is is it's quite uh, he he doesn't play uh, his literary games are not very not very let's say not very, not too much hidden they are not very difficult to to resolve so i, I I would risk a hypothesis that one could quite like one could quite easily uh, draw a line uh, between uh, truth and fiction in Stasiuk's works. And uh, for example, here, actually, this book, Life, however, is a loss. This is the uh, the uh, interview, long interview with Stasiuk. So here he's talking to the about his uh, real infants. Uh, about his dad, who was uh, who was uh, one of the persons who profited, who was ben who was beneficiary of social events, if you if I can say that, namely who, who moved from the village, which is I think not exactly Polish village. It's not exactly as far as I can can imagine because I don't know American village, but I think there are big differences with Polish and American village because. Polish village is traditionally very poor, very poor. The, the lands are the camp lands are rather small, and uh, this this the village is overpopulated, and uh, there are huge differences, of course, uh, between village and uh, the, the city used to be, and they are still. They are still in Poland, uh, of course, not not that not not that big as uh, before. But in the time, uh, the the in the during the in the fifties, I think this is the uh, the story the story told here. This uh, this moving this uh, moving from the village to, to the to the city. It was the in the fifties, so the, these differences uh, in in economical difference differences were huge. So it was. The, uh, it was uh, with no, with no doubt a big big advance to move to move uh, to the to the city for villagers, but still, which what is quite interesting, this book is uh, it is my kind of I can say personal discovery. This book is uh, published in 2015. Of course, Tasho. To, tells a lot, a lot about his uh, his infants, his uh, child uh, times uh, in previous book, and always he's presenting himself as um, a person living in Warsaw, in the big city, born in Warsaw and living in Warsaw. And only here in the in this book, published just six years ago, I found uh, a remark that he was living actually not in. This typical for uh, urban architecture, big buildings for a lot of family. This flat house, uh, how do you call it in English? Flat, flat house. But he was living in one family house. They had a garden, and even in the winter, a deer came from time to time. So it definitely means it is not the center of the city. Uh, uh, Assuming we are not in Canada, let's say, or not in Finland, maybe, but but this is so. I would like to stress the point that we are still in the middle. We are not in the center of the city, but we are not. We are not in the village anymore, but we are still in the, in the middle. Stasiuk is positioning himself somewhere in the middle, even like uh, retrospectively. Uh, again, a few few sentences regarding this um, transition. Uh, definitely, 
definitely uh, yes it was it was uh, it was this just this 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 step from from village to to the to the city it was big avance uh, why we, we can say why why it was so so much better nowadays we would rather move out of the city to the to the village this is very interesting this is of course a very interesting question but as, as, I, as I as I told you the village at that time it was not like village nowadays it was really poor village so I, I wouldn't say that they moved from the village uh, to the city but rather from they moved from the complete poverty to the relative relative uh, well uh, well uh, well off less let's say because they didn't trudge along the furrow of potato of course they were supposed to live in the industry in the in the car industry his his father was working in car industry stashuk uh, recalls some time when he was uh, going to visit his father with mother to give him some sandwiches after the father left the factory and it looked like much better than than village so so it's still it's still uh, it was kind of avance but in a book written actually uh, even earlier this fado this one of books uh, that is uh, that is um, uh, telling uh, that is touching the topic of Central Europe. I will I will be telling about in a few minutes. But anyway, in this book we can find quite contrary perce perception on a village. Namely, when he is recalling his life in a village. Actually, he was not he didn't live in a village, but he was visiting his grandfather in a village in a Podlasia. So he. This, this, this is the quote from a fictional work. This is, this is like uh, what the, the narrator of this, of this uh, novel is thinking, but still we can guess that it's quite a lot of author and our own consciousness in that, because what he's telling is, he's telling that nowadays we live in this world when, the, when we produce a lot, a lot of uh, unnecessary things. We have problems with uh, ecology, with 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 earth with pollution whereas some some uh, the cats ago uh, still in the village there were no no garbage on the village people 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 knew how to deal with trash people knew how to man, maintain sustainable home economy something we are trying to learn now uh, this this quote uh, is followed by quite large, uh, elaborate, uh, precisely describing this village economy, what they were doing with bottles, what they were doing with with plastic, what they were doing with all other things, and this is like you can see you can say it's a kind of like a, a laudation of this of this uh, uh, village economy. So you see there. Are, different uh, very ambiguous uh, uh, ambiguous um, uh, approaches to the to the topic of village okay so, so okay I, I try to i try to uh, summarize a bit this part i was a city boy this is uh, this is the the final conclusion uh, of still in the fado the the, narr the narrator but we can somehow think i think about author and i i i i just wanted to remark this this these op 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 oppositions i was talking about okay so let's move on social peripher periphery uh, mostly uh, mostly most of the heroes of this prose of his prose but also himself when telling about himself uh, in numerous texts numerous uh, numerous uh, works uh, telling about his childhood his his youth as this book i already remarked this i already indicated uh, pointed out uh, this book to you it was it was written not even after 10 years of uh, of uh, development of after 10 years of development of his literary career but but he already felt that he's supposed to to make some re 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 review of his career to 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 tell to the public 
how did he became this writer he feels writer he feels uh, he feels a writer and uh, he's um, in this book he's of course of course creating himself as a literary hero as a future writer more or less like the figure we can uh, we can uh, find also in this uh, à la recherche du temps perdu uh, Mar Marcel Proust uh, in the uh, searching of lost, uh, lost time namely the figure of a young boy that is trying that is dreaming about becoming writer and finally he he, he did it the same the same structure of narration uh, and uh, as, a, as a young person, uh, Stasiuk, uh, as for this economics, economics is concerned, he is also uh, positioning himself on the margin, on the periphery, namely on the economical periphery. He's, he and his, uh, his uh, friends are completely excluded from conceptions. There were always some, something mis missing, either beer or mac or cash. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter. It, it was not important. Here, I, I, I wanted to show you uh, another photo showing the uh, not typical or not typical, it's difficult to say, but this is one of the symbols of Polish People's Republic of the so-called economics of scarcity, which in the case of St uh, Stasiuk and his colleagues became ascetism. We can say this positive positive uh, what what positive you can do out of scarcity um, so what counted for them we never we never talked about money we had more important matters what was it who is better oscar peterson or errol gardner who is playing better who is playing faster who is making better jazz this this is what what counts culture music uh, of course, he's going, he's getting in details, uh, in, in arguments, pro and con, contra particular musicians. I'm not going to uh, get uh, now, but what is important for me here is that here again, he's positioning himself on a kind of marginal place uh, with uh, with um, with referring to American, Af African, Afro-American uh, musicians. This is uh, this is what he what is where is his where is uh, where his heart is. This is American jazz. So something like I am <laughs> that far. I am far from you, twelve thousand kilometers. So definitely he is not there. He's not there. He doesn't speak English. He he even the, uh, he he even uh, admits it, and uh, it's it's not it's it has not nothing uh, for him. It, it has nothing it has nothing in common to speak English and to to participate in in American culture. So I think that this is this is important. I, I want I'm not developing it, but of course uh, one of one of another masters of of Andrzej Stasiuk Stasiuk. Uh, Stasiuk is uh, is uh, Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, uh, and uh, American jazz. This this is this is what what counts uh, for Stasiuk mostly. Even though he he's admitting he's reading and participating in all this in translation, and uh, another form of his uh, marginalization, his uh, his uh, his. Uh, how to say his uh, his spontaneous and his willing his uh, li uh, free free uh, free uh, 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 access free ac uh, ac ac um, free entrance to the to this uh, periphery free uh, free self self positioning of this uh, on this periphery is uh, uh, is um, uh, motivated by, by his uh, by his uh, ex existential attitude and this ex existential attitude is uh, at best uh, exemplified in my opinion in the in the event real event in his life from his life 
which uh, ended in prison, namely the, 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 the moment when Stashuk, when Stashuk uh, got to the prison, how, how, it, how it passed, namely uh, he didn't, uh, he didn't, uh, uh, he didn't make, he didn't make any crime, any big crime, even though he, he broke the law, namely after getting to the military service, he was drafted into military service uh, since he was uh, fired out of the school. I told you he was going to the school, secondary school, but he was one of the worst uh, students from the point of view of behavior. So uh, he was completely, uh, completely against school discipline. He was not able to, to fit into it. So he was fired from the school. Then he, were, he went to the to the army where he spent uh, half a year, about half a year, even he was even in this uh, army with uh, special, not special forces, but a, a, a bit, a bit higher to discipline. But and for a good, for a good behavior, he was given a, a holiday and it finished in such a way that when he was coming back to this, uh, to the, to the military area, he just basically didn't get out of the bus and go on. And then he started to participate in and started his political uh, activity. He was hidden against, uh, he was hidden uh, uh, and against militia. They were looking for him. He was uh, living underground for some time, but finally he was he was uh, he was caught, arrested, and he spent I think one year or something like this. Uh, another uh, dimension, very important. I try to be concise and short nowadays, even though the topic is very huge and also very detail, very detailingly covered in the wor in works of Stasio, namely the topic of communism which is, of course, also the example of periphery. Communism uh, is a definitely peripheral system. It was, uh, it was uh, over, over, uh, it was overthrown. It, it, it uh, only partly survived, uh, especially in Poland, uh, there is strong anti-communist anti -communist movement. And Stasiuk, uh, as far as the communism is concerned, also is, is, uh, is uh, taking the position of peripheries, is, 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 um, takes the peripheral position. Namely, on the one hand, he's uh, to some extent uh, partisan. He's defending the, the communism. He's writing that he don't, he don't remember that any anybody was uh, anybody was uh, was complaining. People uh, before the war, of course, in a village, the life war, war, was was uh, more difficult. And also, he he uh, he, he feels better when he, when thinks about the poverty in China in this in this uh, time, which is of course uh, also. Uh, it was also a communist system, but anyway, uh, in Poland, for his, for his, uh, for his um, father, grandfather, uh, it was a big economical and social uh, social advance, especially his grandfather. He is uh, appealing very often to the figure of his grandfather semi mythical but his grand uh, because his grandfather appears as a, as a, a bit monumental per person uh, sometimes anyway uh, uh, his grandfather um, experienced uh, on his own uh, on his own person this this uh, difference this difference in treatment um, experienced and advance in in, uh, in in situation uh, when comp comparing the what happened, what was going on in Poland before the war and after the war, when before the war he didn't have uh, he didn't have uh, land, he was his uh, social position was uh, very 
uh, very uh, low. Whereas after the war, uh, he he felt uh, an equal part of the society. Uh, but still, uh, when um, Stashuk tries to confront with these phantoms of communism, he's, he's he's, he decides to travel the, the Russia, he's going through the Russia, through Kazakhstan. And what was especially, uh, what hits me especially, it, uh, and here I, I see his, um, his um, how to say his relation, his connection, his love to American culture. Not only his, I think all all the people in Poland, because I think his his imagination is very very much exemplary for Polish imagination uh, in general. Namely, when he is traveling through this Kazakhstan Kazakhstan uh, prairies, these uh, Kazakhstan steppes, which which are like few hundred kilometers uh, right ahead, you cannot see anything. What he's thinking about his first, his first association is American movie. He's, he feels like an American movie in vanishing point. And he starts to compare his situation to, to the situation of the hero of this movie, which by chance, happened to has a name Kowalski Kowalski um, um, of, uh, uh, who who by by coincidence is is, uh, is uh, a bit similar to Dylan Bob Dylan and uh, and uh, and still like this Polish accent in this movie this movie makes it like a part of, of uh, his his own his own uh, identity so this his conclusion is that he feels a child on the one on the one hand of communism and on the on the other hand of uh, american cultures still uh, i think that i i don't i don't go too much uh, too deeper too deep in this uh, in this point but he's still very cr critical very critical uh, toward communism, especially uh, being in a Russian airport in Bratz, somewhere very, very far in Siberia, when he's when he sees this destroying this uh, this uh, turning into into nothing, this uh, Soviet post-Soviet constructions. He has an idea. Uh, the, the 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 hero of this prose has an imagination, has a, has a, has an idea that. Communism was not materialist, but anti-materialist. That communism is, is against material. That it cannot, uh, it, it cannot, uh, it doesn't uh, count with uh, the laws of material. So it is like, uh, like what is okay. So uh, this this is this political uh, political periphery, and uh, I think that I will get uh, very. Uh, quickly uh, through it, but still, this is the this third periphery, uh, which is, I think, maybe even the most important for Stashuk on the road to Badabak. Uh, this is the the book that next to this uh, My Europe, the book that opened this and and deepened the topic of this other Europe, the Central Europe. What is this? This Central Europe. Um, I don't know, maybe I, I don't I won't talk too much about this travel phenomenology. Uh, I think I, I you can perceive uh, it's such a place or uh, maybe a few words. Why he's visiting these countries? Why this is so appealing for for him? He's saying here that it's so nice, it's so good to come to the country you don't anything about or just a little bit and. So we are not any prejudices, and this is what I call this travel phenomenology. You just come with a fresh mind, and this is very much. I don't know if it's good or bad. I think it's very bad. We don't we don't know our neighbors, but it is very much true. Not only about you. I I think that these countries are not very very well known for for you if you are not from these countries, but it's nothing special. Even for Polish people, the culture of contemporary culture of Hungary, Romania, even Ukraine, it's something really, really to discover. 
And this, this was the, the big plan of Stashuk, big project to discover this Europe. I'm not sure if he's really following this line. He says that he gave up any school knowledge. He wants just to look, to smell, to taste. But one of the imp important things uh, in uh, Romania for him is Rashinari. This is a village where Emin Choran was born. Choran, uh, one of the Romanian genius, one of the most important writers and philosophers of 20th century. Um, and um, so, so uh, the, the, this project of Stasiuk is uh, partly, I think, only partly uh, success, successful. Um, and at the end of my presentation, I would like to show you this real Stasiuk Europe because he gave precise uh, re recipe how to create, how to how to uh, construct his own Europe, what he did actually, namely he makes, he, he takes uh, this, this thing to make a circle and he's making a circle of the radius of 300 kilometers around his place, which is Char oh, sorry, Charne, oh sorry, uh, I forgot we have still one short chapter. And this is it, the Europe, this is his Europe, this is the Europe, I come back here. There is Slovakia, Czech Republic, Hungary, but there is no Germany, no Russia. And here, I think we must, uh, if you still uh, are able to, to uh, stay here with me, this is the topic uh, we, we should do even very, very briefly, namely these national stereotypes uh, Stasiuk is telling here i talked a bit about russia russia as this domain of this immaterial this uh, this communism that is completely uh, ignoring materiality of of uh, of the real world what about germany yeah this is the deutschland this is the the phonetic pronunciation of german in in, in polish language this is for Phonetic, phonetic, phonetic inscription, phonetic, uh, phonetic inscription of uh, German word for Germany, Deutschland. This is how it was uh, seen by a graphician, which is um, Kamil Targos. This is the uh, graphic, graphician who is working with Sasha from the beginning of this publishing house. What did the West? What did the East needs from the West? They bring diamonds from the West because, because there is no, nothing else there. They bring cars because East needs nothing else from West. The car finished their days in the sun, sons of Mongolia. Of course, this is this, this uh, very, not, not very nice, but I think very close to the reality, which what statistics says about this um, car, car thieves, German car thieves. What about Germans? Germans will employ Turks, Slavs and Asians because they already worked so much that they deserve rest and all the other nations of the world will work for them. Wait, I hope it will be okay for you, but uh, okay, one uh, slide more. I did not hear that they were friends with Germans. This is how Stasiuk's friends see Germans. They work there, they receive benefits, they buy stuff, they buy uh, or even steal sometimes cars, but they have no friends. German, Germans, I know, so you don't farm them. This, this is what this, uh, I think this is, it's Deutschland 2007, it was ordered for German, for, for by German theater, but still, uh, this is how Stasiuk like uh, repeats these, um, these uh, stereotypes. But there is something more, what can be even more interesting for you. And I think we'll st uh, quickly finish uh, two or three slides more, three slides like that. Namely, Stasio, which what can, be, what can be shocking or not, sees a big parallel between Germany and America. Germany is a bit America. The Germans, Americans, slower speed. 
that Luther and Hitler sort of more more humble, maybe don't 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 such energe energetic. And again, this is like literary topos for him. This parallel between America and German. He sees, like you see, he's watching. He's seeing. He's not terrorizing. He sees. He feels. He feels energy, some force, uh, in the big truck terminals, highway uh, highway junctions, railway junctions. There is. Accum accumulated energy, compressed energy when flows. And in this, this industrial, industrial creations, uh, the spirit of Germany, this energy of America, uh, of America is, is uh, most, is the, the best visible for Stasio. So, so we can see this is not the site of, of, um, of historian. This is not site of anthropologists. This is not site of sociologists. This is, at least in this quotation, this is sign. This is a staring of a, in my opinion, of a little child that is really impressed by how big this truck terminal or highway junction. So this is uh, one of the optics I still see in Stasiuk, Stasiuk work. Okay, and the the last the last slide I prepare for you. This is how Stasiuk wants to be perceived as this simple-hearted, naive, gullible, Eastern, Eastern person. We believed in communism because they told us that we must believe in it. So we went to prison, we believed in anti-communism and he personally, what does he believe in? He believed in rock and roll and this is why he was in prison. Thank you for watching. I hope it was, it was, uh, understandable and not too long and that you have uh, at least a little fun with it thank you very much thank you very much krzysztof for this absolutely phenomenal wonderful very informative presentation uh thank you especially for this rich illustration and the very elaborate presentation that you presented to us these images of the Warsaw in 1960s, of the, the images of the... Okay, I can, I can come back to it. You can come back to it? Sure. <laughs> the images of the Pod Podkarpacki region. I'm sure that thanks to you, uh, and uh, if I modestly can say our YouTube channel, I hope that we will be able to contribute to spreading awareness about the Stasiuk's works. And those of you who don't know his works, I hope that you watching this uh, material, this video, you feel encouraged to reach for his books. I think uh, that you, I think, answered all the questions that our, our, our audience could have, because I don't see any, any new questions. So let me just say once again, I mean, big thank you for you for this very wonderful, informative and thoroughly prepared presentation. Thank you to all our audience. Thank you for your participation. Our uh, next episode in the literary series will be on, uh, I believe, May 18th. And uh, we're going to host Jaroslav Anders, who will uh, give, who is, oh, Jaroslav Anders is in the audience. Hello. Uh, he will uh, give his concluding lecture in his own series dedicated to Poland's new wave poets. So we'll keep you posted. And um, once again, uh, if you are a member of the foundation, that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, if not, you are most welcome to become the member of the Kościuszko Foundation. Uh, thank you once again and hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>